So now you know about the different kinds of structural isomers, but what about those geometric isomers we mentioned a while ago? Well, they come from one physical property of alkenes, which, you'll remember, have a double bond. Having this double bond prevents free rotation, which sounds confusing, but we'll explain as we go along. For example, take the chemical but2-ene. You might not realise it now, but we have two different ways of drawing but2-ene, and the reason for that is this whole idea of geometric isomers. One isomer cannot simply twist to become the other, because there isn't free rotation about the double bond. Here's the first way we're going to draw but2-ene. What is it that you're supposed to be seeing here? Well, we've drawn this with the double bonded carbons in the middle for a very specific reason. When we draw the molecule like this, it's very easy to see how each of those central carbons has two different groups coming off it. There's those two CH3 molecules, and then there's the hydrogen. When each of the pairs of things, the two CH3s and the two Hs, are on the same side, for example, both the CH3s are on the top, we say that we've got the cis isomer. You can remember that because cis and same side all have an S sound. You can probably see what we're going to do next, which is to show you the opposite of the cis isomer. Now that one CH3 is on the opposite side of the other CH3, and one H is on the opposite side to the other H, we've got a different geometric isomer, which is called the trans isomer. In order for a molecule to be able to exist as cis and trans isomers, there are two very different criteria that need to be satisfied. The molecule needs to have a double bond in it to prevent rotation, and each of the double bonded carbon atoms needs to have two different groups attached to it. Because but2-ene has both of these qualities, we can say for sure that it can exist as these cis and trans geometric isomers. We name one cis-but2-ene and the other trans-but2-ene. Great.